In front of me, I have two of the latest mixed reality headsets. On my left, we have the MetaQuest 3, and on my right, we have the new Apple Vision Pro. Both of these headsets are capable of mixed reality, pass-through, and hand tracking, but what makes the Apple Vision Pro cost seven times more? Let's start with the exterior. So the build quality for each is noticeably different. With the MetaQuest 3, we're gonna be primarily dealing with hard plastic, the great thing about this is that you don't need to worry about hitting the headset against anything, maybe dropping it all of a sudden, because at the end of the day, this hard plastic is pretty durable. And even if it does break, you're not too worried about replacing it because plastic is pretty cheap. On the other hand, with the Apple Vision Pro, it is really nice. It feels very premium with the metal and glass construction. However, it, when you're wearing it, at least in my experience, there was just a lot more anxiety about breaking it, hitting it against something, scratching it, you know, setting it down a little too rough on a, on a hard surface like this. And re in reality, it's probably pretty durable, probably durable enough to handle all of those. But because of the price point of this headset and because it's metal and glass, it just makes you a little bit more nervous when you're handling it. And so what I've found is I've had a lot more confidence using the Quest 3 and maybe making a little bit more aggressive motions in VR, turning my head quicker, just, you know, being a lot more comfortable using the Quest 3. The Apple Vision Pro is also going to be a bit sleeker and smaller than the Quest 3. However, it is going to be a bit heavier, even when we don't consider the battery, which is by far the heaviest component out of all of these three headsets. Once you wear it for longer than about 20 minutes, you'll start feeling a little bit more fatigue on the front of your face. Because this headset is so front heavy, you get a lot of pressure on your cheekbones after a while of use. With that being said, Apple's Solo Loop is really comfortable, by far the best sort of out of the box VR head strap that I've worn. The fabric is very soft, it's very breathable. The dial on the side makes it very easy to adjust the headset, so it makes it very easy to take off and put on. And it does kind of just make it feel, you know, a bit more of a, of a wearable and a luxury item. Just keep in mind that the Apple Vision Pro, while it is gonna be a more premium headset, the Quest 3, in my opinion, is gonna give you that confidence and that comfort to really use the headset to its full extent. Now that we've gone through what both these headsets are like on the outside, let's dive into what they can do on the inside. And we'll start off with pass-through. Now, the MetaQuest 3 comes with pretty good pass-through. When I first got this headset, I was really impressed. It's full color, pretty smooth. The image was, you know, pretty good. Uh, definitely a huge upgrade over the Quest 2. However, once I used the Apple Vision Pro, I could easily tell that this headset's pass-through was just in a whole nother league. When you put this on and you see the world around you, it feels like you just have a pair of ski goggles on. Like, it doesn't feel like you have a TV strapped to your face. And there's three reasons why I believe it feels that way. The first thing is, it's super low latency. With the Quest 3, it does a pretty good job. However, it is noticeably choppy. It can be choppy at times. It can have weird artifacts. But with the Apple Vision Pro, it's super low latency. I can turn my head around really quickly and not really notice any sort of lagging or latency. On top of that, you have a much higher resolution on the Apple Vision Pro. The Apple Vision Pro uses really high density OLED screens and you don't really notice any sort of pixelation, artifacts, any sort of screen door effect. Like I said, it, it, the only way to describe it is it's like you're just putting on a pair of ski goggles. And the final thing, which I think is the most important, there is essentially zero distortion on the Apple Vision Pro's pass-through mode. With the Quest 3, if you put your hands or any other objects kind of close to the headset, close to your face, it'll start to distort, straight edges will start to bend a little bit, and it'll just look a little wonky. And that's also why it's hard to read text that's up close to your face, because once you bring like a phone up, you won't be able to read anything because it all gets distorted. However, with the Apple Vision Pro, it is very consistent. You can bring things right up to your face and it'll still remain really sharp as if you're still uh, looking through just a pair of goggles. The Apple Vision Pro's pass-through is a lot better, but both of these headsets are definitely very usable. I feel very comfortable walking around in the Quest 3 in my pass-through mode. I don't have any issues with it. It is noticeably worse than the Apple Vision Pro, but that doesn't mean it's bad. Next up, let's talk about the hand tracking. When the Quest 3 first came out, I was really impressed with the hand tracking. However, you do need to keep your hands kind of in front of you 
And the Quest 3 can sometimes mess up in low light scenarios or straight up just not even detect your hands at all. However, with the Apple Vision Pro, it is a lot more consistent and you have a lot more freedom on where you want to rest your hands. So I found that even with my hands in my lap, on my side, you know, in places where I thought the Apple Vision Pro might have a little bit of trouble, it's able to track my pinches and my scrolls and swipes very accurately. That combined with the eye tracking makes this a very intuitive and seamless experience. Looking at buttons and pinching to click on them really did feel like a magical experience. It was it was sorcery and, and it was so smooth, super low latency. With the Quest 3, you know, sometimes the virtual hand will, will lag behind your real hand a little bit. Sometimes it won't be in exactly the same spot. One thing that I didn't like about the hand tracking on the Apple Vision Pro, on the Quest 3 with hand tracking, you also can see a virtual hand, which kind of helps you align, you know, where your hand is in virtual space. And I found that actually helped a lot in terms of typing with my fingers. On the Apple Vision Pro, you don't get a virtual hand. You just have to, you know, put your finger onto the virtual display. And for some reason, I found that it was a lot harder to type on the Apple Vision Pro if I wasn't using the eye tracking and I was trying to, you know, tap the virtual buttons with my hand. And I think part of that is because the Quest 3 kind of shows you where your virtual hand is. Now let's get into what each of these headsets are actually good for. With the Quest 3, you've got a vast library of games on the Meta Store. You can also connect your Quest 3 to your PC, which will allow you to play VR PC games using Oculus Link. And that also offloads all the processing onto your computer. So if you want better graphics, higher refresh rate, you can just offload that onto your gaming PC. The other nice thing is you've got controllers and that lets you play a wide variety of games. It can improve the immersion for a lot of games, especially games where you need to hold an object like a sword or a, some kind of gun. It definitely improves the immersion there as opposed to simply using your hands. That kind of highlights one of the biggest differences between the Quest 3 and the Vision Pro. With the Vision Pro, despite it being in Apple's ecosystem, which is a very strong ecosystem, the Vision Pro itself lacks a lot of apps. And what that means is as of now, your functionality is pretty limited to just basic web browsing or essentially using this as a virtual display. I think Apple's goal with this product was essentially to sell a glorified dev kit uh, so that developers could start playing around with this and create new apps for it. There's already a lot of cool ideas out there like this uh, real-time Formula One viewer. But I think Apple's idea is to just put this out in the market and let the developers work on figuring out how to actually use this. And eventually they'll shrink down the battery, they'll make the headset slimmer, smaller, lighter. And you can kind of tell with this solo loop here, this, this feels and looks more like some kind of wearable, kind of like Apple Watch, rather than something like their MacBooks and their iPhones. And that's kind of where I think Apple wants to go towards in terms of the Vision Pro. Let me know in the comments below why you think Apple released this headset and what they plan to do with it in the future.